Uh, so it's Open Access Week, right? Uh, how many of you know that it's Open Access Week? <laughs> Every, everybody else except for Sami Suryamaki. Uh, but I was, I was Wednesday. I was talking to law students. Uh, doctoral students about privacy, technology and digitization. I asked the same questions and only two hands came up. There was a bit more people than now. Uh, which actually means that now I'm talking to the wrong crowd. So, I mean, I, mean, this is, I mean, this is the main problem that we have with open science, that every time that we start talking, we're always talking to each other. It has been going on from time to time. And this is something that we, all of us, need to take very seriously. It is very, very difficult, it's very hard, and what I'm trying to explain is that how we try to do this in humanities. Uh, Pilvi, uh, sorry, Tuli's talk, excellent. I, I, if I had to talk only about open science, I wouldn't have anything to add, really. So I'm talking about, when I'm talking about humanities, the situation is quite different. I wouldn't even want to talk about digital humanities, because that points to something else, but even digital humanities and open science, uh, they we are not very good in humanities for some reason in, hum in open science. And this is very strange in one way, the openness of science. Humanities, we've been there ever since the beginning of antiquity and, and so forth. Humanities has always been there, but now the movement of open science and humanities for some reason hasn't been going so well together. So, I mean, there are, there are exceptions, of course. So, so what I want to do, I mean, uh, my, my purpose is uh, that I, I, I want to present to you how we think, I mean, what are the small steps, that what Tuli was saying about the small steps, uh, how we are, are trying to plan the research process, uh, what we do, and then teaching, how those are aligned. So, so what we do at the University of Helsinki and beyond, to, so that we could implement the open science, at least to the younger students who, who use digital methods in, in humanities. And, and so forth. So I've also, I've, I've had these plans where I, I try, I've failed miserably when I tried to do sort of a greater leaps. I, I started a bit more than a year ago, I fancifully thought that I, I do this open Mandeville Senodo project where I get, I have a lot of Mandeville contacts all over the world. I, I get them to share their data, get them to do everything and they think, I, I thought that they think alike. Uh, so what, what it, turned out there was only a couple of these people that I am uh, very intimate with, I mean, the way that we do research, but their idea of, of should we start collaborating and sharing something on, on a platform and so forth, yeah, 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 okay, Mikko, sounds okay, but uh, we're, we're not going to do that. But one reason is for, that, for them, I mean, that they, we, we talked about this in, in a conference, and, and, and they said that, well, I mean, we've been just raised by people who say that, uh, you don't share your data. You don't even show your PhD to your peers only after it's been published in a monograph, which is a 10, 15 year process. So, so when people have been raised in this way, it's a long step to get the open science implemented. So small steps forward, that's what we want to do. I don't know, has anybody heard me tell this joke? Okay, no one. Yes, good. Uh, I, I, I've been holding this for, for more than a year. Uh, so so I, I used to tell it in many presentations before. So in data science, people know uh, this relates to the open science as well. So, so that people were saying before that data is, is the new oil. So, so if you just got the raw data, that doesn't have value as such. But when you extract, transform, do things, that's when the value is added. So openness, sharing, and, and or even getting the data out there and so that people develop things that will become the new oil. So then they that got old, so they had to invent something new. So then they thought that, okay, let's start saying that data is the new bacon. So in the same way, the process, they had t-shirts with new bacon. So, so my idea was that, okay, let's do that data is the new bacon with a capital B, uh, which is for the humanities, and then you get your named entity recognition, which Francis Bacon are you talking about, and so forth. But when you tell this to the humanities crowd, everybody's like, okay, that's very funny. To me, it is amusing. <laughs> but, uh, but, but I mean, I mean that the way to go forward, I mean, that one thing that in humanities, what we need to do, I mean, there's digital humanities as such, there's also this kind of hype uh, that doesn't really, I mean, I'm, my identity is an intellectual historian, that's what I want to do, that 
I'm, I'm not going to change to anything else. So the methods, developing everything else, open science and so forth, is very good as long as it contributes to what we want to do in the first place. So the humanities research questions first. That is, is not very easy when we start talking about things. To us, the, I mean, the, the cultural change that we need with open science uh, regards that we have the multidisciplinarity. In humanities, that is not a given. We've been trained in a way that, that your expertise means that you do everything yourself. So if you're now listening to the discussion going on about how the system is unfair, how we distribute the uh, research funding based on the publications, when, when if you have multiple collaborators, you get more credit. That's the current situation. But also in the humanities, we maybe need to think about that maybe we also need to start collaborating more in, in terms, terms of, of, of that there is value when, when mo a lot of people work together. So even some professors were, were saying that, well, it, how, it's unfair when a plumber and an electrician and so forth get together and they build a house and they get all credit for that house. And when we in the humanities, we're building these small huts here, so we don't get as much credit as those who collaborate. So maybe we should also start thinking from there that building the houses is our purpose and not the, the small, small things here. So, but. All of, all of these, I mean, these are my, when, I, when I'm talking about digital humanities and so forth, and, and I try to say what, what is important in humanities, open science is very much there, and, and the collaboration between different organizations, because the situation with the humanities is different from natural science, because so, we are very close to the data that, that is usually held by the memory organizations, that is very close to what, what we people in the humanities do, so library, archives. Uh, museums and, and, and so forth is extremely important for the, for the research that we do. Now, I mean, the way that we, I mean, that we, we're thinking about also we try to do this ecosystem thinking. Uh, so, so we want to get everybody together. I, I'll talk in a little bit, uh, I, or I try to, if I have time, enough time, I, I end by talking There's this Heldic initiative where the idea is to get a lot of people together around digital humanities, doing things together, where, where all the stakeholders are given a platform where this kind of collaboration becomes possible. So, but our way of doing, I mean, what we really want to do, if this is multidisciplinary way of approaching data sources, uh, so then we do that in all of our research so, and, and, and teaching. So it's, it's learning by doing, really what we do. So what we don't, we're not so worried about giving, uh, if you have like open science course, if, I, if, I, if you're giving an open science course for the researchers at the university, again, what happens is you get the same people who are in it already. But, but then if it's, if it's done in a way that it's infiltrated in what, other thi what, what they're doing in any case, that is the way how you can get the open science there. And that is the very, very difficult part because you have to change the way that, that, that everything is done. And maybe from, I mean, that w when we start with the youngest students uh, who are entering and, and teach them a, a new way of, of, of doing things, that is where, where, where the impact comes. And, 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 the, and the, the pragmatic aspect is also something that, that we are very, very uh, interested in. So, so that the, the actual research processes and, and then the teaching that they are all the time aligned. So our research process now, I mean, this is, I mean, there are others, of course, in digital humanities. This is visioned by what I do with, with the, the people who I collaborate with. So, so the idea of cycle, that, that is very good, but, but also that the idea that there's all the time information going to different directions. So understanding the data, making the exploratory tools. Now, just now we're thinking, I mean, that the same things that are people in natural science and bioinformatics, for example, have been doing for a long time, uh, is that pre-processing some data becomes the data sets. What you do to the data sets becomes very, very important. And not everybody in the humanities, when this is new, has, has the possibility, for example, or even the know-how to use some uh, uh, I mean, CSC supercomputers for, for doing kind of pre-processing, for example, through uh, blast uh, that, that for text recognition is one thing that, that we are doing in our, our uh, research project at the moment. So, so for example, when we start talking about a million 
computing hours it, it, for regular humani humanities people is very strange. But then when you tell that what comes out is a data set that everybody can use, uh, so, so then to get people in line to use those, to share the, the research data, that becomes a completely new question and, and, and that is very, in humanities that people, if you ask the older, older core of the humanities, they say that, well, we don't have any research data. It's just the raw material that we study, and then we, maybe we take some notes, and, and then we publish things, and, and that's the process. Here, the process, the cleaning up of the data becomes so important, very much the same as, as, as in, in natural science, so, so, so that more focus needs to be put on that. And here is, of course, when the collaborating and sharing, and, and in our case, it's also feeding back to the ones who have the raw data, the memory organizations, for example, we're cleaning up a lot of library uh, catalogs for the purpose of, of, so that we can use it for, 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 I mean, studying the quantitative aspect of knowledge production. And, and, and that then feeds back also to the memory organization. So working together with National Library of Finland is extremely important for us and, and, and here the, the, the emphasis to the research process, just like Tuli was saying, becomes ex extremely important. So, so uh, this is our, what we are working on, this expands, this is, uh, the idea is to study especially Finnish newspapers and, 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 and different ways of looking at them. So the work packages, uh, one of the work pa packages here is explicitly an ecosystem for newspapers, journals, and historical documents. So to, to think so that how different uh, groups beyond this one project then afterwards can come together to study them. Which, I mean, this kind of help when we are just starting in humanities in this sense, uh, it, it's extremely important. We are here clearly behind uh, natural science uh, in, in this respect of, of creating this kind of data analytical open source ecosystems. So, and, and another thing is that, I mean, that we have to be very careful is that, I mean, the, the multidisciplinarity of it becomes important. So we put together partners, and this is again from, from our uh, COMHIS project. So National Library has a stake in it, us in University of Helsinki, University of Turku, both cultural history and, and the IT there are, are involved. So, so we're sharing, we're really pooling the, the, the know-how and, and trying to look what are the, the st strongholds that, that people have. If you're looking at this from the perspective of, of, of natural science, I think this is, this is very common, but, but in the humanities, this is really a, a new way of, of, of doing things, I think. So, I mean, after, after this, uh, we should get to the point uh, where, for example, the data mining is at the center and research teams also beyond these, I mean, this consortium that we're talking about here, but also others when, when we, for example, get the uh, pre-processed data of the text reuse cases in Finnish newspapers, there's some 40 million cases, there's plenty enough for others to study as well afterwards. So then when, when we create, I mean, that implement this system so that, that people understand it, how it works, everybody, I mean, the, the access and reuse, reproducibility, transparency and so forth, they start working. So you would think that it's, everything is beautiful like this, but in reality, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a far process to, to get where we really want to go. And, and uh, I mean, if we, I mean, open data, uh, there, there are, there's, there's great, great challenges. I mean, the model in the humanities is that, that beyond, I mean, at first when we, uh, this is our prime case when we start to try to say that it really works so that raw data is opened, the research process is opened, and, the, and then the results become open. So, so the newspaper case, I, I think it, it, it's, a, it's a good one to say that, okay, here's a, here's a good case where the stakeholders come together and it works. It wasn't very immediately like that. I mean, if you think about the Finnish news newspapers before 1910, there's no copyright issue actually involved and there's no privacy issues. So, so basically, I mean, that why do we need copiosto? there with this kind of so it from researchers perspective it's it's little funny 
in, in, in one sense. But, but then when we're dealing with all kinds of other data sets, usually the business model that has been established some 15 years ago is such that uh, you get a company that does the digitization, they get the right to license that back to the, to the university, and, and their model is ex exactly against this view here is that they just give it to us researchers to look at the data uh, instead of that we could do any kind of text mining on that. So the whole business model is based on that. And now it's only changing so that, for example, Gail has, has understood that, that also they can probably get something out of the, that, that they gave, give the raw OCR raw data instead of us forcing us to use just the graphic user interface. But I mean, that why are these steps of so difficult and, 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 and there is, the only answer is that it, it really takes time for a cultural change. And, and so, so the concrete examples, when we can really, if we can go to the, to the professor who doesn't care about digital humanities, who doesn't care about open science, his answer is, hasn't science always been open? I publish my work so people can read it, it's open. So, so the answer when we show concretely that, look, this is how your questions change, answers change, that's when they start recognizing, and not before. Well, I mean, one thing that came to mind uh, that we also been thinking when, you, when we say that, I mean, that, okay, then we publish openly. I was just thinking that uh, from a perspective of a person who tries to do a fully open w workflow, what are the worries? Well, I mean, one worry that we have is that these companies, again, if we develop they, they don't, they're not really developing the tools for their, their, their products. And uh, we are in the middle of a situation when, where, where, where we still don't have, we, we have one data set that we can study, but we don't have a right to publish on it yet. So we're developing open tools that would also benefit the company. Uh, so there's a little of worry that maybe they take the, the software, implement it if it's useful, and then tell us, well, you're not allowed to publish. I mean, that no contract can be reached. But of course, I mean, there, there are the right licenses and, and we would need more. I mean, one thing that, at least in the humanities, we would really need, I mean, so much time is spent uh, discussing with different publishers that can we ha have this data? What can we do with it? And, and, and so, that, so the general guidelines that use these licenses and so forth. Maybe this is what Art Data is doing already. I hope so, and because uh, this is something that very simple guidelines is something that we would re need as researchers as well. So, okay, teaching. I'm running out of time. I talk too long about my jokes. So, so uh, I'm just going to say that I mean that the, the idea that we want to do is to build this ecosystem thinking, the research process, and we want to think about the teaching in the same way. So, so constructively align it so that they go together. So students in different processes, research process uh, is, is very, very important for us. One thing is that, okay, me and we worked a lot with Leo Lahti. Uh, so so we, this is from earlier on. Uh, our idea particularly was that we take students who, who are, haven't even got their master's degree to work with us so they learn the process and what we're doing when they have the skills. Of course, we, we get something out of that because they, they contribute to the work. But, but for us, to, the best way of learning is when you have students in, your, in, in the research involved from the beginning. And in humanities, this is very, very sort of foreign. In natural science, not so much. So, and, and, and the way that this is the... We, I'm, I'm, I'm in charge of a digital humanities uh, a teaching module, 25 credit module. So here the whole idea is that we give the humanities students and, and there's also students that we take from the, from the computing side as well, uh, so that they get their rudiments about theory and practice and methods, not so that we try to make the every humanities person a necessarily a very skilled coder, which is very, it's, it's not possible giving the background where they're coming from, but so they understand what can be done with different methods. And then, I mean, the, everything where we head is towards this, in the spring we have this multidisciplinary project or, or hackathon we call it, one week where, where we have people from many different backgrounds, like in our own research project, work on the same sort of data sets that we work in, in, in the um, 
in our, our own research. So, so I'm, I don't know if you know about this, but if you're interested, I mean, this was from 2015, but 2016, all of those are well documented. The idea is that there they are put to do the research in the same way as we try. The, the data sets are open that they use almost always, but sometimes, for example, ULE public broadcasting data was under a license. But of course, we prefer open, open, open data sets. And then they document the code comes to GitHub, GitHub and, and they document all the process and, and the presentations and write blogs about them. So, so, so that, that is, I mean, in our experience, the very best way of learning about what is open science is by doing it in, in, in something that is relevant for your, for your studies in, in, in any way. And uh, okay, well, just one, have you, have you heard about this FOSS? 16. So, okay, take a note and sign up before 16th if you want to come to the universe, uh, the reception. Uh, so, so if you want food and wine. So we have a conference on philosophy and history of open science. And, and this is exactly from the, I mean, the idea here is to, to think about it. The open science movement, fairly new in some sense. I mean, new in terms of less than 50 years. Uh, science as an open practice from antiquity onwards. So why in the humanities are we in this paradoxical situation where we have very smart people who are interested about openness in, in many ways, but then are not on board open science? Some are, not, but not everybody. Uh, so, so we try to bridge that by bringing in, th there's people talking about alchemy, uh, then something, I mean, the, the data, data science aspect, of course, open publishing, F1000 is presented, and uh, sociologists and, 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 and different kinds of people from different backgrounds. But it, what we want to do, the reason why we're doing this, and we want to engage the humanities people, but we're a little worried that it's people like us who come there, and, uh, but that's what you have. And, 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 but little steps, one step at a time. So, th so that's how I think we, we get where we want, which is that open science becomes a mainstream paradigm that, that we do all the time. That's all. Ah, no, sorry, sorry, it wasn't. <laughs> uh, so, so the Helsinki Center for Digital Humanities, I don't know if you, if you see, this is from the application actually, so I, I'm not guaranteeing that this is the, what, what it will be in the end, but, but you, you have all different kinds of aspects. All the faculties are involved in one way or another, uh, so, so we're trying to create a platform where also open science can, can be taken forward. And, and, and the way to get, get people to collaborate is the way I think that open science functions. Okay. <laughs>